The war in Ukraine could have a devastating impact on hunger around the world. According to the U.S. Department of Agri Agriculture, Ukraine and Russia combined make up a third of the world's global wheat and barley exports. And fighting is already driving up food prices in the countries that depend on grains from the region. Arif Hussein, chief economist and director at the World Food Program, is here with more on this. Arif, thank you for joining us today. Ukraine and Russia are part of this region known as the breadbasket of the world. So what happens to the food supply if this war goes on? Thanks, Diane. Thanks for, for having me here. Um, it's terrible. Uh, you know, in, in, in the business, in, in our business, we sometimes see the worst of humanity. And um, Ukraine is a prime example. You're seeing what is happening inside, how millions upon millions of people are suffering. But at the same time, this disaster is having a similar effect in places far, far away from Ukraine. Uh, what we see is, uh, like you said, I mean, you know, Ukraine produces about 30 percent. Ukraine and Russia produce about 30 percent of wheat, 20 percent of corn, about 80 percent of sunflower oil, which goes to many parts of the world. And unfortunately, also to some of the countries which are already in trouble. Think of Lebanon. Think of Yemen, think of Syria, think of Iraq, think of Afghanistan. All of these places also rely on imports uh, from, from this part of the world. Now, the worst of all of this is that this crisis is not happening in a vacuum. Uh, we were already dealing with COVID. You know, inflation was at an all-time high. People's incomes are already decimated. Governments already tapped out and uh, debts at the highest level. And suddenly on top of all of this, here comes the Ukraine unnecessary crisis. So what we are seeing is that our bills are going up. Just to put that in perspective, we have to pay now almost $71 million more per month to do what we were doing you know, in, in 2019. So, so imagine, how many more people could have been fed by that $71 million? So, uh, Arif, which countries will be the most impacted by these disruptions in the production and the exports from Ukraine and Russia? So what we see is that, you know, the effect is uh, pretty much all over the place because it's not only the wheat production, it is also the oil prices going up. And... Uh, I mean, I like to do this comparison between 2008 and now, because prices are pretty much at the same level as they were in 2008. So what happened in the 2008? What we are seeing today is frankly way worse than 2008 or even 2011. Why? Because one, we didn't have COVID then. Two, we didn't have a war in Yemen. We didn't have a war in Syria. We didn't have a war in Ethiopia. We didn't have a war in Northeast Nigeria. And all of this plays an impact. Right now, for us, there are about 276 million people who are in hunger crises. Out of these 276 million people, there are about 44 million who are a step away from famine. People are gonna, people are dying in Yemen. People are dying in many other countries. People are dying in Ukraine. And if we don't sort this out, many, many more people will die. So if that's happening already, what will food security look like for these places in the next few months? Look, this is already extremely bad. If it continues for another couple of months and we lose the, 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 the corn planting, if the wheat harvest is not happening, if the ships don't come out, you come fall, you're looking at even a bigger disaster. These numbers which we are talking about, these are real numbers. We have seen them before. And every time we say it cannot get worse, it gets even worse. Right now, there are two things which really matter for World Food Program. If we are to save lives, one, it's money. We need right now upwards of $20 billion to save lives of about 140 million people around the world. Just on, on Ukraine, we are looking at assisting 
about three to five million people inside Ukraine. In order to do that for three months, it's going to cost us about $600 million. And if we have that money, and if we have humanitarian access, we can do it. We did it during COVID. We can do it now. This is our business. But we need these resources, and we need them now. All right. Arif Hussein from the World Food Program. We appreciate it, Arif. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.